let's uh, let's dive into it. So, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about the background and the goals, what we're trying to achieve with this initiative. We're going to keep it brief. Um, we will look at the plan, the overview of the plan, uh, look at some of the lessons learned throughout this initiative, and then dive into more details on some of the work that we're doing uh, at this very moment. This is also a core conversation track, so I'm gonna try to leave uh, plenty of time towards the end for questions and hopefully answers as well. Um, just so we can hear from you guys, possibly using or watching this initi initiative, what you guys think, what you think our priorities should be and so on. So hopefully we can have a conversation there, uh, very important for this type of track. All right. First of all, uh, I want to say a big thanks to to the funded team that we have um, that we have in the initiative. Uh, we have two of the members on the team here in the room, uh, Joseph and Andre. Can you please stand up? <laughs> uh, Tim Millwood and Andre Matesco. They are not here at DrupalCon, but uh, they are definitely worth an applaud them them as well. I think. So, so this isn't just uh, the work of, of a few people, right? Um, this has been a big topic for Drupal and within the community for a long time. So it's not only the funded team here that's done a lot of work, but it's been uh, people in the past that's put in a great deal of, uh, of effort here. Uh, so Hey Rocker, Greg, Greg Dunlop, uh, started committing to modules that we sort of trying to get into core nine years ago. That's a long time ago. Uh, Ken Rickard, or Agent Rickard, six years ago, Workbench Moderation, and, and Dave here in the room as well has been involved in, in related efforts for a long time as well. Six years ago, we did the sort of first commit start to the UUID module, so, so big applause for these guys as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dave is in the room here as well, so he can't hide. <laughs> he never hides. <laughs> So, uh, and then about uh, seven years ago, this is when we first started having core conversations around uh, getting some of these pieces into core. So it's been a long period of time, you know, persistent work being put in uh, to, you know, talk about these things, improve Drupal, and, and hopefully get these things into core. So it's, it's not only been Drupal 8, this has been a long effort, that's all, I'm, uh, all I want to say. So the first core conversations, that was Denver, uh, 2012. Um, after uh, the 8.0 release, uh, the Workflow Initiative was the first approved uh, initiative to move ahead. Uh, since then, there's been many, many more initiatives, but we take a little bit of pride in being, being the first post 8.0 initiative to be approved. So what are we trying to achieve? So we want to enable efficient and accurate content workflows in Drupal. We are a content management sifter, uh, system after all. That's, that's what we're trying to achieve. Uh, for content editors, obviously, um, by enabling moderation, content moderation and, and full site preview. We'll talk more about what that means in a second. Um, one of the things we did uh, about a year ago, when sort of this initiative really had crystallized, is that we had a, a sprint, a usability sprint, or a planning sprint in Amsterdam, where we mapped out some, a lot of the efforts and a lot of the stories and, and, and journeys that we wanted to achieve. So this we did with uh, Boyan and Roy from the community and, and Joseph on the funded team. A um, lot of whiteboard, a lot of sticky notes, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning. Uh, who's this for and how, you know, what will it look like and, and how we're going to go about these things. So that was, that was a very important uh, uh, effort we did last year in Amsterdam. All right, let's uh, dive into some Drupal issue queue, shall we? Um, or we, we're going to take a, a, a look at the uh, faces here. So the general plan you'll find in the issue queue, uh, there's a lot in there, a lot of detail, but it's for the purpose of letting everyone uh, having the chance of being a part of, of, of this journey and contribute. So 
the plan is divided up in uh, several phases. So we're going to walk through the phases to give you an idea of what we're targeting, what functionality we're targeting, where and when. Uh, so the first phase, also aligned in the, in the issue queue, is we want to make uh, introduce the revision API for more entities in core. At the moment, it's only the node entity and blocks that have revisions on them. In order to do any sort of moderation or workflows, we need revisions everywhere. So this was one of the very first things that we're doing. And there's a lot of work in this very first phase, a lot of underlying APIs, not necessarily <laughs> visible to, to anyone. Uh, we're working on an upgrade path because we, if we're enabling revisions on content entities that don't have them, we need to be able to upgrade to that uh, within the cycle of, of Drupal 8. Uh, also a lot of hidden work, so to speak, with new interfaces. We've got an editorial content entity base, lots and lots of work just going into that particular piece of code that is not used in many places uh, at this point. So this is a big phase. Uh, it's taken a lot of time, probably more time within, than we envisioned in the first place. I'm saying that it's fixed here because it's, we're almost there. For the purpose of this pre presentation, I like the color green, so I'm going to say that it's fixed. There are some outstanding issues there still, so almost fixed. But that's phase A, so big milestone. Phase B. Um, Initially, we had in, in, in the early phases here to introduce the concept of parent revisions. Uh, this is to allow branches and sort of parallel changes to, to entities. <coughs> Introducing things as revision trees, branches, and ultimately conflict management for like concurrent, concurrent work. We've postponed this phase. Uh, we're waiting on actually the very last phase to, to, to finish this line of work. So we're not going to talk too much about this because it's still uh, quite far in the future. Phase C of the initiative um, is what many of you have seen in various announcements around Drupal 8.2 and Drupal 8.3. We've introduced the content moderation and the workflow uh, modules. Um, I'm not going to dive into details on exactly what they're doing. That's not the purpose of this presentation here. Um, some of the challenges that we've, that we've run into here is, um, and we spoke about this on, on Gabor's uh, session here just before my session, um, is with these modules, we're suddenly giving a UI, a user interface, to long-standing challenges and, and bugs in core. So we've had to deal with not only introducing new code and user interfaces, but these old assumptions and old bugs in Drupal around revisions, forward revisions, forward revisions and translations, moderation of translations and forward all of these things. Um, so that has been a big challenge, big challenge. But content moderation is now in, in 8. Point, it was in 8.2, and the rewritten version of it is in 8.3. So phase C, although there's, again, a few minor issues that are outstanding, we consider this phase largely closed and done at this point. And the goal here is to make it stable by Drupal 8.4. It's currently experimental in, in 8.3. So that's where we're at with that. And yeah, you, might see, you might think that I don't know the alphabet. <laughs> But we've had, I'll come to this later in the point, but we've, we've removed some faces. <laughs> so phase E comes after phase C. <laughs> uh, phase E is dealing with trash, mo um, trash um, uh, we'll introduce a trash module and undo functionality. Quite, quite a basic functionality. It made it, it, made it into um, Macintosh around, I think it was in the 80s. We still don't have it in our content management system in 2017. Um, but uh, uh, so that's a quite a basic, basic functionality that many people exist from a content management system today. We don't have that. We're looking to, in to introduce that. There's uh, quite a few usability challenges around this. Um, so this phase still needs work. Uh, we have proposals in the issue queue. We have wireframes and designs and, and quite well flushed out patches. 
so if you're interested in this particular functionality, we need help with this one at the moment. So take a look at the uh, issue number on the screen there. Um, the release target for, for trash module and undo functionality is still to be decided. Uh, it depends a little bit also on, on the effort from the community here and the interest in, in this phase. All right, after E comes G in my alphabet. <laughs> Are we gonna see G.5? <laughs> <laughs> so this phase uh, is actually split up into, into two uh, a little bit, so we've got two issues uh, tracking this. <laughs> So to answer your question, Moj, yes. <laughs> uh, so this phase is ult ultimately here to introduce the end goal of this initiative quite, quite much, uh, enabling full site preview with something that we call the workspace module. Uh, so this is something we're gonna dive into a little bit in more detail later. Um, it's a very introducing a very bold and new mental model to, to to Drupal, a different way of thinking uh, when it comes to managing and moderating content. Uh, so it's a big change, perhaps even in terms of thinking how we use Drupal and how we work with Drupal, perhaps one of the bigger ones that we introduced in recent years. Um, so this phase obviously still needs work. Um, we are, however, targeting 8.4 for a very, very minimal experience of, of some of this functionality. So we're making a lot of progress here or, already. Um, and this will be a big, big focus in, in the coming weeks and months, uh, getting, getting work on this. Peter? Are you, are you gonna come back to the mental model? Or to? The mental model? Uh, yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Um, and then the very last phase, phase age, uh, we're gonna deal with uh, conflict management and uh, of parallel changes, because when we introduce all of these moderation capabilities and, and so on, there's, we enable editors to, content editors to be very productive. That also means that they will start stepping on each other's toes if we have you know, multiple workspaces, perhaps you know, branches of, of, of content changes that are being done. So we need to uh, empower content editors to collaborate. And, and, and solve conflict. So that's, that's a big phase. Lots of UI complexity. We're gonna look into what we think that, you know, some of these, how we can sol some, solve some of these problems. Uh, this phase has ultimately, we haven't started coding on any of this yet, so. Before we dive into more detail um, of the mental model there and, and about uh, workspaces, uh, let's just summarize a little bit what the functionality we're looking at here are. So, we wanna make revisions of all content. That's something we want the end user to be able to do. Um, we want to be able to moderate content packages, groups of, pack, uh, groups of content together. Um, existing tools uh, within Drupal today uh, allows you to moderate single pieces of content. That's not enough in this case, so moderation of content packages. Uh, we want to be able to review uh, content packages under deletion of content, of any content, uh, and collaborate with others' content packages or others' work. Um, so this is like the big picture of what we're trying to enable uh, within this initiative. Sounds basic for a content management system, um, and uh, some of these things is, is obviously not there. Again, a brief overview. So we've removed a few faces and merged them together. So at the moment, there's two green, Two yellow, looks pretty good, I think. We've made, made a lot of good progress. Phase B is currently postponed, and, and phase H uh, outstanding uh, so far. All right, before uh, details, let's just cover some of the lessons learned. Again, we talked about this in, in Gabor's session just before here, but we found it uh, pretty challenging to do experimental modules that need very deep integration uh, with Drupal. Experimental modules is a great way of adding new kind of separate functionality. Um, but we've found ourselves having to rely on the traditional core contribution or core governance model for, for making these very big and, and, and sweeping changes. And that's still slow and hard. It takes a lot of work. Uh, so our new governance process and our, our new experimental 
module process doesn't necessarily have a, a solution to making these deep uh, sweeping changes, touching the entity API, touching the translation API, data storage, these kind of things. So that's a lesson learned. Um, we, can, we can still improve there, I think. And again, I mentioned this already, surfacing existing bugs with stable code. What's stable and experimental and, and the timelines here when it comes to the experimental uh, uh, governance process, that's, that's still, maybe there's a bit more discussion that we can have there. Also, introducing new dependencies to or during the experimental timeline for a module is also posing uh, some challenges. So we introduced a workflow module in 8.3. The generic uh, governance model says you have one year to make it stable. But because it's now a dependency of content moderation, we've only got six months to make it stable because content moderation needs to be stable within its one year cycle. So there's, there's um, some, some lessons there that we perhaps could, uh, could learn something from. And we still rely on very few core framework committers. Um, I think they're doing a great job, uh, but our, our community's productivity has gone up quite a lot during our eight cycle. And although we've added core committers, we haven't necessarily added core framework committers. Again, going back to that first point of you know, doing deep integration change into Drupal, perhaps we can, we can look and learn from some of these lessons here to further uh, increase productivity within our uh, core process. And the very last uh, point that I'd like to make, despite some of these lessons, is Funding core development actually works now in Drupal 8. We can, we can be very productive and we can see change come through. Um, and that hasn't been the case previously. So it's, it's been a great, great experience. I think that we, again, we can do more. But it's, I'm, I'm very glad to see that we've done some sweeping changes and actually funding developers to work in core, specific areas, specific initiatives. It's been a great, it's, it's been a good experience. All right, let's dive into a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna focus on two phases, phase C and phase G. Phase C is content moderation. Uh, and this is not all issues that we need help and, and we're still working on, but it's some highlights of issues. So we're working on enabling workflows on entities without bundles. Uh, quite a lot of technical terms here, but again, this is core conversation. So that's an important one that's sitting. Uh, there's quite, uh, quite a few, or two or three, uh, tricky bugs when it comes to forward revisions and forward revisions with translations that we're still tackling. And uh, a big area of discussion has also been the entity form save button. So the, uh, the button and the design around, uh, around the interface where you save entities uh, when it comes to moderation states and so on. I'm not going to dive into details of these issues, but if you are interested in, in contributing and helping out, uh, please take a look at those issues in the issue queue. Uh, one other thing that I want to highlight with uh, the content moderation module is the improvements, the UX improvements that we've done. Um, so we have the very first, or the old, user interface and the new. Uh, the video is a bit small here, but what I, the point I want to drive across here is uh, the speed of which you will get your work done configuring uh, content moderation. Uh, so they essentially, both sides are performing the same task. You'll see that it's a much better experience and you'll get your work done configuring transition states uh, on, on the right side. Uh, on the left side, the old interface, you have to switch between pages, go back and forth. Um, we're being a bit more in line on, on the right hand side, making it a lot easier for site builders to, to get their work done. Making a good use of, of, of the modules, the modal windows. On the new side, we're already done. Um, in the old user experience, we're sort of still switching between pages, switching between different structures within the administrative user interface, going back and forth. Um, 
So that's, that's, that's good, right? That's good. It's, it's much better experience. Uh, thanks, Joseph, for, for making uh, many of those improvements and suggestions. All right, that's content moderation. Let's talk a bit more, more about workspaces. Um, and again, this is one of the primary goals of the initiative. So I want to spend some time here really explaining this concept and trying to get people to understand how we intend for this to work. And again, uh, it's the perfect time to get everyone's feedback on these things because we're still in the very early phases of, of doing this work. So before we dive into this, who are workspaces for? What, who are we designing for here? So the, the first role is obviously our content editors or even the primary role. We talked a already a little bit about the stories that we want to enable here. So obviously we want to be able to moderate content packages, groups of content. Um, we want to be able to publish that content, that content package as a whole and review that at the same time. And then collaborate with other parallel content packages at the same time. You might have multiple um, editorial staff on your team, parallel changes going on, so that sort of facilitating that collaboration is, is important. Secondary role is obviously the site builder. Uh, we want to enable configuration of workflows, uh, quite obvious, and configuration of moderation states. But again, the first line there under content editors, that's really the, the primary audience that we're dealing with here. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain what a workspace is. I'm gonna do so by having three uh, workspaces, three content packages that are being worked on at the same time. So we've, we've got the live workspace, the, the live version of your site that visitors see when they come to the site. We've got three changes going on. One, introducing a new product out on the left. Uh, one uh, editorial staff might be working on an upcoming event. And then there might be last minute fixes to the upcoming event. So we've got three parallel changes going on here. New product and upcom upcoming event. They are sort of copies of the live workspace, where live is the upstream. The last minute fix that's being worked on has the upcoming event as its upstream. All right, so it's a last minute fix to this upcoming event. You can see here how, how you can pull down updates from your upstream workspace and how you can obviously push additions uh, to your up, up, upstream workspace as well. One scenario could look something like this. So we start at the very left. Um, by we want to make a change, we want to make any type of change, maybe that new product that we looked at in the beginning. So the first thing, the first step that you're going through is that you will create a new workspace. Uh, in this new workspace, step two will be to create, change or delete content, making your changes. Third step would be to review those changes. Uh, before you're doing the review, you probably want to pull in updates from from the live workspace or from the upstream workspace, just so that you have a fresh copy of everything, all right? So you, you pull in those updates, potentially resolving any conflicts, because there might be conflicting changes going on in the upstream workspace, right? Once that's done, you can go through the review, uh, the review of the entire workspace. So we're not, we're not thinking about individual pieces of content here. We're moderating and reviewing the entire workspace, all the changes within that workspace. Um, and then, you know, if, if you don't pass the review, obviously you go back, make the changes that you want. If you pass the review, you can do one last pull from, from uh, the upstream workspace and then publish your whole change set. So that's what one scenario could look like. Um, so what we're going to look at now is uh, some uh, prototypes. So I'm going to switch to the browser. So these are our prototypes. This is not, oops, you don't see the prototypes. That's quite helpful. Here we go. So what we're looking at here is not a, a fully working Drupal site, obviously. This is... Uh, prototypes. 
Um, so we're looking at, at, at the Drupal site. We are in a workspace that in this case we've called product microsite updates. So we've done some sort of m updates to, to part of, of, uh, of the website. Um, we can open up the toolbar uh, where well, there's a lot of things here, and, and we'll go through this. First of all, we can look at the current workspace. So we have some information about the current workspace up here. We can click on manage this workspace just to get a better understanding of what's in this workspace. So in our microsite updates here, we can get a good summary of where this workspace is at. So we can see all the changes that has been made. So 76 nodes, 12 users, five main menu items have been changed in this workspace, in this change set, so to speak. And get a list of all, all the changes that was done here. Further, we can switch between workspaces. So we're in this microsite updates here. A different team might be doing changes uh, separately, so we might have a new news article workspace here. So you can see we can switch between these workspaces. And as you can see, the site obviously looks different because there are different content changes going on. Uh, and again, workspaces is a full copy of, of your upstream uh, workspace. We can then take actions on, on, on these changes. So let's say that this workspace, which contains new news articles, we can deploy this. So let's go through uh, what this looks like, because this workspace is currently ready for deployment. So we've applied moderation states to full workspaces here. So this workspace is already re reviewed, it's gone through some moderation, and, and it has the status ready for deployment. So we can hit uh, deploy to production or deploy to live, we can add in sort of a message here just to describe uh, the change, and then we can deploy to live. And what's happening here is that we're updating the workspace from upstream, we're checking for conflicting changes, and then the last step is we're deploying to the upstream. So after that process, your changes has been brought uh, live so that your visitors can see the changes. Here. So we can also get a better overview of everything that's been going on on your site. So there's quite a few changes going on here, multiple teams working on multiple changes. So this is an overview of all your workspaces. Uh, we can filter workspaces based on their state. So we can say, you know, I only want to look at the workspaces that are ready for deployment. That has already been reviewed, for instance. Uh, we can preview preview these uh, workspaces and switch between them. Um, and we can also search for specific uh, uh, workspaces based on, on uh, certain keywords. So filtering capabilities here are important for changes, very busy, busy site with a lot of changes. And, and another thing that you can see here is that there is a notification up here um, again, colla like facilitating collaboration between, between various teams, we can see that there are seven changes um, that you might uh, need to pull down from your upstream workspace. So let's do that. We see that we have seven changes here that's already been going on in live. And in order to get a clear view of what your site will look like before you go live, you need to pull down those changes. Right? Quite similar to like a Git workflow. So before you push your Git changes, uh, you have to always pull down the latest changes to like uh, resolve conflicts, right? So you can't just push anything without having to first solve the conflict. So it's your responsibility before you go live to push, to push those. There's a question. So this is, the question was, uh, when I say live, is this within one Drupal environment or are we talking multiple different servers or um, like physical separate instances? This is all within one site. So that's, that's a good question. What we're talking about here is workspaces within one live site. So workspaces 
exists in, par in parallel on a single site. Um, something that we haven't touched on here, which is not within the scope of this initiative for core, is you can actually have workspaces on separate sites as well and deploy between those, but we, that's, that's a separate session. Uh, there's one more question. So the question is if this handles both content and config, we're only doing content here. There's a very strict separation between content and config. So only content. So again, let's go back to the example here. So we have seven changes in the upstream workspace and we can simply click on the update button which then pulls down those changes to your workspace and, and your workspace is updated uh, we no longer have a notification there, and now we can do a full, clean review of what your site will look like before it goes live, right? And it's the same process that we're going through before we actually do the deployment. Every deployment always includes like that update, pulling down the latest changes. Uh, another scenario which is quite important, uh, talking, oh, we have a question. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it, can we assume that in this, uh, with this enabled, that you w will always use a workspace? You'll never like actually make a change in live? Yes, okay. the, the idea is that every change should be separated in, in, in a different workspace. Uh, you don't have to necessarily, but it's certainly encouraged uh, to do so. All right, let's look at another scenario. A scenario with, you have a very busy site, there's lots of uh, changes going on at the same time and there might be conflicting changes, right? That's a, quite a tricky scenario to deal with. Um, so I'm just gonna go back to the beginning here. Um, so we have this workspace, we've done a bunch of changes here. Uh, we wanna get this into the production workspace or the live workspace. So we're gonna deploy this to live. The first step we're doing is that we're pulling down updates again. So pulling down updates. Then we're checking for conflicts and the process stops here because there are conflicting changes that someone else has made in live. Or it might be you know, another workspace that has already published changes that are conflicting with your changes. So during the process here, uh, it stops and it will ask you to resolve the conflicts. So we'll do that. And that brings you to, to a separate interface here. So in this case here, we have three conflicts. First conflict is in a menu, in a menu uh, item and a menu link. A menu link is quite tricky to visually uh, preview because your menu might be in multiple places on your site. So in this case, uh, we're only sort of giving you some metadata. So we give you the revision and the actual uh, link uh, that's been changed. And here you can pick which one you want to keep, so either your own or, or the production version. So let's say we pick one. Uh, and obviously you need to hear, um, machines can only do so much. So we can't uh, magically figure out which version you need. So ultimately you'll have to, you know, knock on your friend's shoulder and actually ask which one should we have. So machines, we can't solve all the problems here, right? So there needs to be communication uh, here as well. So talk to your, uh, you know, your staff who's, who's been making the conflicting change, decide on w which one we should have uh, as, the, as the version right now. We go to the next conflict. So in this, in this case here, this is a node. So this, is, this we can actually visually preview. So we have, first of all, a basic version here with like a, uh, the, uh, a preview of the text and some metadata. But let's say that might not be enough in order to make a call on what version we wanna use. So what we can do here is that we can preview the local version, which below gives us uh, a preview of, of this particular version. We can go up or preview the remote version where we have a, a changed title, for instance. So again, you see this user interface sort of sits on top of your site because we're not really within a workspace here. We're operating on top of the site a little bit. Does that make sense? Um, so again, we can preview the different you know, versions of the site here. Pick a version 
and then go to the next one. Again, this is a block. A block might exist on multiple instances in your site, so we can't easily visually preview this. I think there's a question down there. Very good feedback. The, the author feed, author field should definitely be in there, right? That's, that's very good feedback. Uh, so back to the custom block, we can pick a version. And now when we've sort of resolved the conflicts here, we've picked what versions we should actually go with, we can continue with the deployment. That brings us back to the last step where we're actually deploying. And that has then made the changes live, right? So the question is, um, when we've got to that point of picking uh, the conflicting versions, if I decide to cancel instead of going ahead, what happens? Like how far in the deployment have we gone? So uh, the good thing with this design is that your conflict is always resolved within your workspace. So it has to be, you have to solve all conflicts. You need to be completely green within your own workspace before pushing anything live. So, and it's the same with those of you who work with Git. You need to resolve fully your conflicts locally before you promote any changes upstream. So you can, you can back out and you haven't done a single change to, to production. Um, so, that's, so that's a workflow of going through uh, conflicting changes. So, um, so as relatively simple as that looks, I can tell you that there's projects that we've done where if they could, the client would choose to not be allowed to experience the conflict, right? So when you go to edit something, it says no, it's already been changed by someone else or blocked or something. Do you know what I'm saying? So you, you, you know, they'd rather be prevented from ever encountering a conflict than having to resolve. Is that something that you could enable as a right. choice? or so? So we have, we have details in the user interface to sort of perhaps help you a little bit with this. There will always be uh, conflicts. So when, when we sort of enable or want to improve producti productivity of our content editors, there's always going to be conflicts. So there's no way of avoiding that. But we can do smart things in the user interface to facilitate communication or facilitate collaboration in order to like avoid as many of those scenarios as possible. So um, if I go back here, so for instance, the notification up here, seeing that you have 28 changes upstream, don't let that number grow too big because that means that you probably have a lot of work to do in order to sort of fix that. We can also then say, you know, do smart things in the user interface here as saying, this workspace here, the text is a little bit small here for the demo, but this workspace here, we can, it already says here that there's five conflicts in this workspace. Um, so it probably needs some attention, right? Um, so switching to such a workspace, you'll get clear visual uh, clues here of what's going on. So workspace status, there's conflicting changes here. Um, we will never be able to sort of neatly walk around and avoid conflicts, but we can, we can facilitate collaboration in, in the best possible way. Um, Jonathan. Yeah, um, so in the conflicts in the demo, if you choose library, you choose your own, do you think it'll be smart enough to do that on a field level as well as on merge? Or like it's almost yep. title field conflicts, you're choosing uh, your own, your own, but you're changing the body or the so, so the question is, um, the conflict resolution process, could that be smart enough to uh, be on a field level? So the plan yeah, is... Yeah. I was going to ask more or less the same thing, but even within a field, I mean, with code, you can diff by line, right? And yep. Can I pick, you know, which of the two changes I would prefer? Uh, so uh, the, um, the initiative intends to make the conflict resolution part pluggable. Um, so you could have a pick a winner, or you could have uh, within 
um, merge systems or branching systems, there's something called a uh, f uh, four window, uh, three way merge interface where you could uh, f help the user to make a manual three way, way merge. There could be a fallback to that process uh, being an automated three way merge. We've already started experimenting uh, with that in the, within the initiative, um, introducing a merge library that is, can actually, like a PHP library that can do three way merges. Um, it's based on uh, traditional uh, lowest common ancestor um, merge functionality. So we could actually, we could do a user interface that actually attempts to automatically solve your conflicts for you first with a automated three way merge, but in the case that the merge doesn't work, then bring up a user interface to say, you know, a human needs to help here. Um, so can, to answer your question shortly, yes, we can definitely do that. Uh, so this is one of the repositories that we within the initiative own and, and develop as part of this. Yes, let me bring up the, here. Uh, we have a question at the mic here first. So step up to the mic so, so that the questions are recorded in the, in the screencast later. Yes? Uh, have you thought about uh, the permissioning around workspaces and multiple users utilizing one workspace or is there any? Uh, yes, we have been thinking about that. There's still a lot of details to sort of figure out there. But at the moment there's basic uh, access management around that. Um, probably a lot more we can do. So these are, you know, ideas and feedback that we gladly receive for the initiative so we take the right calls. Okay, Another so my question? question is related with his question. How do you get workspace to work with workflow moderation? When you need like a, a high level of moderation, you know, different states going through before that content is deployed to life. So what mm -hmm. is the plan for that? Is it already yeah. integrated? Or? So the idea here is that we don't do any moderation at all on individual pieces of content. We always do moderation on a workspace level. So because end users very rarely think about changes as a node or, or as an article, as a single page. I've changed my website. That's, that's the mental model of, of most end users. Um, they'll say, hey Dick, I've made a change to the website. Can you take a look at it and deploy it? They won't say, I've made a change to this block and that node only, can you, and that menu link. It's, we moderate a whole content package. Uh, so the moderation states are then applied to the whole workspace. So I can go in and uh, manage the workspace. I can uh, change the moderation state right here. You can see that there's an edit button here. Or I can go in and um, change the moderation state of this uh, workspace in, in, on the back end here and switch between moderation states here. And this is then, this applies to the whole workspace. Uh, so all the changes within workspace is then moderated this way. This sort of removes the, uh, the element of it. Joseph. You can help Step up. So Joseph is uh, the designer behind a lot of these com concepts. Yeah, I just want to, want to add that you can have different workflow types. So there's, there can be a workflow type for managing content individually, but you can have a different workflow type for uh, managing workspaces with different uh, states, moder moderation states and transitions. Yeah, that. so if you would like to do moderation on an individual piece of content within a workspace, you could do that. Um, yeah. It's probably simpler to just have moderation on, on, on a workspace, we, but we're not making any calls here. It's still up to you to sort of configure if you want to. The, the idea is to empower the end user to, to do more of these things. So creating a workspace, we don't have that in the, in the uh, mockups here, but creating a workspace is, is done by a click of a button, which gives you a clean slate to work on where you can do all your changes um, without having to care about knowing what's a single piece of content and so on. So 
the purpose is to make it easier for the end users. That's the primary audience that we're trying to make it. Um, of course, you need to understand the concept of how a workspace uh, works, and that's why we do a lot of communication around this, and th that's why I said this is a bold new mental model uh, that we introduce to, to end users. It's a, it's a reimagination of how Drupal works that, that we're introducing here. Peter. Hey, Dick. Uh, question, you mentioned configuration before and a separation between configuration and content. Uh, do you, within the workspaces, uh, block all the changes to configuration entities and simple config, or how do you prevent someone from thinking they can change a view radically, let's say, within the workspace um, yep. and have that uh, go live? Very good question, and there's been a lot of conversations around this, not to have uh, confusion in this in this space, right? So, uh, one of the proposals is that um, when you are in a non-live workspace, so let's say we we're working on our uh, product, uh, you know, update here. When you're in a non-live workspace, we disable any form of config changes. So very much like config read only, but in a non-live workspace, which means that the user have to go to the live workspace in order to do any config change. It needs to be explicit, and that way the user will understand that any config change that I'm doing right now will be in live. Because again, we're working on a single instance of the site here. If you want to separate that workflow, then you'll, you know, then you'll need two instances of the site, and, and then the problem becomes a lot uh, more complex. But there are some ideas of disabling config changes in non-live workspaces. Because we, if we let people do config changes in non-live workspaces, the user might think that, okay, only these config changes is only locally, right? Um. What about um, hooks that can fire in non-live workspaces and email notifications and all of that? Now you're being so complicated, Moshe. <laughs> Good question. Uh, we don't necessarily have a... Yeah? They will run or they will not run. Yeah. Yeah. Gabor. Yeah. Uh, so hi. So just wanted to add some anecdotal evidence to try to protect people from making conflicts because we've hit a, hit a critical bug with content translation and content moderation states where if you, if you make new versions of some uh, of content in, a, in one language and you're trying to do a different new version in a different language of the same content, then they may clash due to the moderation state storage system. And the current proposed stopgap is to stop you from being able to making those changes. So you, you go hit the edit button and it tells you, no, you're not allowed to edit this because of this and this. Yeah. And we've got a lot of people freaking out on the issue because it does not match their idea of what should be allowed uh, to be done. So I think the, the where we've hit this problem and and we hit it hard and we tried to do use this as a stopgap even then, then uh, the, it was not very positively uh, received. Yeah. Right, are there more questions? to a use user case that we want to have scheduling, but we also want to have content moderation. I was wondering if there's any plan to integrate those two. So when you want to have content moderation and... Scheduling. Ske scheduling. Uh, Ted, where are you? <laughs> He's not here? Yeah, so, there, so there, is, uh, there is work being done on this. It's being done outside of the, of the initiative. Uh, but scheduling is certainly something that a lot of people are thinking about. And, and I suppose the goal is to make them work together. Yeah. <coughs> yes? Yeah. So uh, first of all, I'll just say seeing this kind of evolve from you know, deploy in Drupal 7 and then the suite in Drupal 8 is amazing. It's awesome. It's really wonderful stuff. Um, I was curious with the relaxed services and communicating between multiple environment, is that something that's going to stay as kind of a contrib space for the time being? For the time being, that's going to be staying in the, in the contrib space. Uh, the, the conversations that has been within core is that that's not an 80% use case. Um, the people, we who are involved in the initiative, 
it's a primary use case for us. Mm -hmm. So you could uh, quite fairly accept that that's always going to be sort of part and that's always going to stay up to date with this. Sure. Uh, so that's for now is going to live in Contrib. Okay. And then just kind of a follow up to that. Um, it seems like another possibility with at least a subset of these modules is multi-site sharing content. So the conflict stuff, merge stuff, s even the workspaces and then deploying those to a completely separate site and having the UUID stuff. Um, just having that pluggable and allowing the contrib space to work on that, tons of potential there. Yep. So it looks amazing. And one other piece is I can see this solving a lot of problems with, say, entity references to media. Okay, is the media, are we tracking revisions against the host entity or is that living in its own state? And instead, just having a global workspace to store kind of those revision changes that you can push at once is an amazing idea. Mm -hmm. So, really great stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, a lot of work in that sort of space in thinking about content as a service. There's been, there was a session yesterday and Dries yesterday posted a blog post. We've made some very uh, intentional design decisions with the system when it comes to the API and the protocol that we use to, to push changes, which enables some very interesting use cases uh, around sort of central content management, content hubs and so on. Uh, watch this space, there will be, there will be more coming, that's for sure. Uh, parts that we're working on as well. Um, yeah. So, uh, sort of a follow-up to the config moderation, or the config changes in workspace, and it's probably outside of the scope of the current initiative, but are, have there been discussions about revisioning everything? Like, so you could change the site title, or you could change layouts, or a view page title, or things like yeah. that. Um, so there has been, I think there are some very early stage patches in making config revisionable as well. Um, certainly within the initiative, our goal is to make every content entity revisionable to start with. Uh, there's been disc discussions within, within page manager and, and panels to make all of that revisionable. Uh, obviously a site title would be config. Um, yeah, th there are discussions around it. Uh, nothing sort of concrete at this time. I want to finish off um, uh, the presentation here with just showing a, a different prototype that includes uh, some, some animation, um, a bit more eye candy of what we intend the final product to be. Um, so uh, to, to sort of reinforce this mental model that workspaces are entirely separate from each other, um, we worked a bit on, on the user interface on sort of how it could work and look, um, sort of swiping the whole workspace to a side to really understand that this is not individual changes, this is an entirely separate copy of your site and we have multiple, multiple of those. So there's some quite nice sort of visual clues that we can help people with in, in understanding this. So this is just an animated prototype in, in switching between workspaces and, and different changes. Um, and, and, the, and the toolbar here on top. Um, so this, this is the final product that we're sort of envisioning. Uh, for 8.4, there'll be a minimal experience of this uh, coming in, but then 8.5, 8.6, we're gonna sort of grow this user interface. Another question? <laughs> fixing conflicts of conflict changes. Um, it's whoever gets into the upstream workspace first wins, and then the other person will have to solve a conflict on a conflict on a conflict. <laughs> All right. Um, that is um, most of what I had. Let's switch back to the presentation for a moment.